Hi Prescott Pumas, welcome back. Um, more read alouds today. Three more stories, as always. Um, we have Really Spring by Jean Zion. Do is Talk by Carson Ellis. And Chocolate Me by Tay Dix. Alright, so we'll start with Really Spring by Jean Zion with pictures or illustrations by Margaret Bloy Grant. And we are in spring right now. It really is spring. Really spring. It was almost spring. The air smelled like it, the sun was warmer, and the calendar said that spring had come but everything was still gray and bare. The growing, budding spring hadn't come to the city. There are no green signs of spring, someone sighed. How dreary, groaned another. People looked as sad as the city. Across the streets, a little boy who had been frowning just as hard as everybody suddenly smiled and said, why wait for spring to change everything to grass and flowers? Let's change it ourselves right now. Change it? How? A lady asked. When the little boy told how, everyone cheered. Tell the mayor, shouted the lady. We'll all help. The next morning, after an exciting speech by the mayor, they paraded down the street behind a big brass band. Boys, girls, friends, and neighbors carried paint cans and brushes, ladders, and scaffolds. They painted climbing vines on the fences and daffodils on the houses. They painted flowers on the awnings over store windows. They painted lamp posts and fire hydrants bright colors. On the big buildings, they painted whole fields of spring daisies with brooks and rivers running. Between hills covered with dandelions, beside a lake, a sign said, no fishing. No <laughs> fishing. On the pillars in front of the bank, they painted bluebirds hunting for breakfast in the make-believe grass, willows grew on mailboxes, and a border of tulips bloomed on the bakery. Along the waterfront, the old piers soon looked like big moss-covered rocks. They painted frogs on them. The black gas tanks became giant mushrooms. On the excursion boat that would soon go up and down the river, they painted reeds and water lilies and blue fish jumping. They painted buttercups on the bridge and the cars of the train running over it were each a different color. Smokestacks, chimneys and factories, water tanks and towers all changed from sad gray to happy green and yellow. Finally, everything that could be painted had been painted. There was a bright, fresh, spring-like look everywhere. After the city had gone to sleep, it began to rain. It rained and rained throughout the night. In the morning, from one end of the city to the other, the painted grass and flowers had all been washed away. Oh no, all their hard work. But the rain had started everything really growing. Real vines and sprouts were coming up green in the gardens, and crocuses had pushed up through the earth. Tiny ferns had appeared like magic through the night. Plants had started in the window boxes, and the trees lining the streets were covered with tender buds. If we looked outside of our classroom right now and looked at the tree that's right outside our window, we would see tender buds on our tree as well. We'd probably see bigger leaves too, leaves and tender buds. On top of the old deserted barges in the river, grass grew and dandelions, real ones now, were there. In the zoo, the animals went to their outdoor cages and sniffed the new thin grass covering the park. Robins chirped and lions and tigers stretched in the spring sun. They knew, excuse me, they knew it had come at last. The boys and girls who had waited so long oiled their skates and polished their bicycles. Everything was awake and stirring. As they looked all around them at this, ah, excuse me. Ah. 
everything was awake and stirring as they looked all around them at the city. It was really spring. The end. This is kind of what Oakland looks like right now. We have a bridge, we have these towers, we have parks, and if we look at all those things, we'll see. It's really spring here too. <laughs> all right, now do is talk. So this one is not in English. Carson Ellis, the author and illustrator of this book, made up his own language to go with the story that he's writing, but he used really beautiful pictures to tell us the story that's going on. So we're going to have to use the pictures. And I wonder if we can find out what some of these made up words mean, these nonsense words. And we know this is a question because we have the question mark here. So we know that do is talk. That's a question. But what is the question asking us? Let's see if we can find out. Do is talk. Do is talk. Mana zoot. Ta-ta. Do is talk. Ma even dao un plonk. Do Kim a plonk? Mana zoot. Rubada unk ribble. Sue. Bor ink and icky. Icky, icky, icky. Icky. Rubada unk ribble. Find out what do is talk meant. 
Did you find out what Gladden boot meant? Or any of the other nonsense words? <laughs> Alright, our last story today will be Chocolate Me by Tay Diggs with illustrations by Shane W. Evans. Chocolate Me. Sitting on my stoop when I was five. Not like Timmy or Johnny or even Mark, though I wanted a name of like theirs. Chocolate me. When we'd play, they'd say, look where your skin begins. It's brown like dirt. Does it hurt to wash it off? Chocolate me. They often stared at my hair. Why do you look scared? It's so poofy and big, like a wig, not straight. Don't you hate to comb it? Chocolate me. As they pointed at my nose, I froze. It's so big and wide, I tried to hide. Chocolate me. I squirmed and wiggled as they giggled at my teeth so white. You can be our flashlight at night. Just smile and we'll be all right. Chocolate me. Are they being very nice to him right now? When I came in from outside, I cried, why? I asked my moms, why can't I be more like Timmy or Johnny or Mark with straight hair and a different nose? I suppose my teeth wouldn't seem so bright if my skin were a bit more light, right? chocolate meat. And then my mom said, wait one minute, my sweet, can't you see? You have skin like velvet fudge frosting mixed in a bowl. You can lick the spoon. Cotton candy hair soft to the touch of my fingertips or braided like rows of corn with a twist. And your smile, she says, makes me so happy I could cry. No amount of money could buy how it makes me feel for real. It's perfect. Look, she says, look in the mirror and love what you see. Chocolate me. And he has a shirt that says chocolate me. Hmm, I started to think about my face, my skin, my nose, my fro. And what do you know? Along came Timmy and Johnny and Mark, who suddenly didn't seem so smart. And I started to smile and smile and smile. It felt so good, I could taste it. Why? Because I am chocolate. Chocolate is sweet, chocolate is smooth, chocolate is beautiful and delic delicious. Chocolate is me. Chocolate me. But is he really made out of chocolate? No. <laughs> The end. Oh, that was a good book. So his friends weren't being super too nice to him in the beginning, but he found things that he loved about himself, and he didn't let the things that they were saying bring him down or make him sad. And his mom helped take care of him. And now they're able to take care of each other. Him and his friends are able to work together. So today's activity is going to be about chocolate me. Um, it's going to help you with some social emotional skills. Um, some practice loving ourselves. So I'll give you a little bit more information down in the description and then also on the Seesaw Classroom. Um, yeah, I still want to see what you guys are working on. I hope you enjoyed today's stories. I will see you next time for more read alouds. I love you and I miss you and I hope you all are doing well. Bye friends. See you next time.